The physical properties of light take on a whole new meaning when viewed from space. The view of Earth is spectacular. Shuttle astronauts see 16 sunrises and sunsets, breathtaking sunsets, every 24 hours. Most people imagine that when astronauts look out the window of the shuttle, they see the whole Earth, like that big blue marble that was made famous by the flights that went to the moon. But the shuttle is much, much closer than those astronauts were. So we don't see the whole planet, the whole ball at once. We just see parts of it. But what that means is we can see a lot of detail on the surface of the Earth, so it's a great view. That view is made up of various waves in the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. In this module, we'll look more closely at the electromagnetic spectrum and how various wavelengths are used in fiber optics. By the end of this topic, you'll even understand why the sky is blue in daytime and why the sun becomes dim and red at sunset. The same principles that are demonstrated all around us in nature are the very principles that allow light to travel in optical fibers. It's not magic, it's nature. The nature of light. Thank you, Dr. Ride. We will start the module with a description of the nature of light and the electromagnetic spectrum. You can see that visible light is only a small part of the spectrum, starting with very large waves and very low frequency to wavelengths the size of a pinhead at a faster frequency, which is where visible light occurs, to ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays in very short wavelengths at very high frequency. If we zoom in closer to the visible light part of the spectrum, you can see that lasers transmit at wavelengths just below visible light near the infrared part of the spectrum. LED and VCSEL laser transmit at 850 and 1300 nanometers, which is not visible to the human eye, and single mode lasers transmit at 1310 to 1550 nanometers. Light changes speed as it moves from one medium to another, for example, from air into the glass of the prism. The refractive index of a medium varies with the wavelength or color of the light used, a phenomenon known as dispersion, and this causes light of different colors to be refracted differently and to leave the prism at different angles, creating an effect similar to a rainbow. This effect can be used to separate a beam of white light into its constituent spectrum of colors. To help illustrate how light waves work, let's look at how waves work in still water. Wave propagation describes how waves travel through a medium such as water or glass. As waves move outward, they have a speed of propagation. Propagate to send the transmission of waves through a medium such as water. Light waves have similar properties, although with electromagnetic waves, propagation may occur in a vacuum as well as in a material medium. Wavelength is the distance between repeating points of a wave, or distance a sine wave travels in a single cycle. With optical fiber, it is measured in nanometers and designated with the lambda symbol. Frequency designates the number of crest or sine waves which pass a given point in a given time period, generally per second. It is measured in hertz, HZ, or CPS, cycles per second. Light travels nearly 300 million meters per second and is constant in a vacuum like space. To determine the wavelength, you divide the frequency in hertz by the speed of light. AM radio band is 560 kilohertz to 1,600 kilohertz. Therefore, a wavelength of 1,000 kilohertz frequency is the speed of light divided by the frequency 1,000 kilohertz is 1,000 times 1,000 or 1 million hertz equals 300 meters. FM radio band is 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. Therefore, a wavelength of 100 megahertz frequency is speed of light divided by 100 million equals 3 meters. As the numerical value of the frequency increases, the numerical value of the wavelength decreases. In fiber optic wavelengths, there are three common wavelengths, 850 nanometers, 
1,300 nanometers, and 1,550 nanometers. These are characteristics that you will need to remember and understand. Multimode fiber optic wavelengths are typically tested at 850 and 1,300 nanometers, and single mode fiber optic wavelengths are tested at 800, 1,310, and 1,550 nanometers. You will need to remember that multimode fiber optic systems are typically operated at the 850 nanometer and 1,300 nanometer wavelengths and single-mode fiber optic systems are typically operated at the 1310 nanometer and 1550 nanometer wavelengths. Now let's move to another optical principle and how it applies to fiber optics, refraction. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave due to a change in its speed. This is most commonly seen when a wave passes from one medium to another. Reflection is the change in light direction when light bounces off a dissimilar medium, like a mirror. We saw how a prism refracts light and how the different wavelengths of light are each refracted differently. Violet light, for example, is fastest, shortest wavelength, and refracted the most. Red light is slowest longest wavelength and refracted the least. The variation of velocity in respect to wavelength plays an important role in fiber optic light transmission as we will see. The index of refraction of a medium is a measure of how much the speed of light is reduced inside the medium. For example, light waves travel at the constant in a vacuum and almost as fast in air. There is only a slight reduction in quartz, water, and glass. While light of all wavelengths travel at the same velocity in free space, the velocity of light in material substances is different for different wavelengths. The index of refraction, symbolized by n, represents the ratio of the velocity of light, c, in free space to its velocity, v, in a specific material. N refraction equals C speed of light over V velocity. Of particular importance to fiber optics is that the index of glass can be changed by controlling its composition. Take a look at the indexes of refractions for selected materials as well as the approximate speed of light through the materials in this table. You can see that glass has a variable index from 1.5 to 1.9. Refraction occurs when light waves travel from a medium with a given refractive index to a medium with another. At the boundary between the media, the wave's phase velocity is altered. It changes direction, and its wavelength increases or decreases, but its frequency remains constant. For example, a light ray will refract as it enters and leaves water. Understanding of this concept led to the invention of lenses and the refracting telescope. One point to note is that some of the light penetrates into the second material and is refracted, and the rest of the light is reflected back into the material. Snell's law infers that the angles of incident and refraction rays in similar substance is equal. In other words, light should continue in a straight line as it leaves one material and passes into a similar material. This is an important principle in fiber optic transmission. As light travels through the glass-to-glass -glass interface typically used in fiber optics between fiber end faces in a connector or splice, there should be little or no refraction if the fibers have the same refractive index. Dirt, damage, and improper termination or splicing techniques will cause degraded performance, loss, by changing the refraction angles and or increasing the amount of light reflected back from the interface, allowing less light through to its destination. A common example is the Fresnel lens. The idea is to remove as much of the full glass lens material as possible preserving the surfaces where refraction occurs. 
A Fresnel lens is compacted as the sections of the full lens are reassembled. The effect is nearly the same and the weight is dramatically reduced. You can find Fresnel lenses in theater lighting and in lighthouse beacons. The light is collected in the lens and focused into a single beam. You may also have seen plastic Fresnel lenses used to magnify. For example, in some driving applications, the lens mount on the rear window of a driver's car gives you a larger field of view. If you look at refraction and attenuation in nature, you will understand why the sky is blue during the day and why the sun gets larger and turns red at sunset. Blue light has a much shorter wavelength than red light. Because of its shorter wavelength, air molecules cause the blue light to scatter more than most other colors, called Rayleigh scattering. So the atmosphere holds more scattered blue light during the day. As the Earth rotates, the sun's angle relative to any point on Earth changes. This also changes the distance that sunlight has to travel through the atmosphere before it reaches our eyes. Sunrise and sunset present the lowest incident angle for the sun's rays, causing the greatest refraction and scattering of light, making the sun appear to be larger. The longer red wavelengths are refracted less than other colors by the incident angle, and they are also the least attenuated by the increased amount of atmosphere in their path including dust, smoke, and soot, so red is one of the most predominant colors left for us to see. Sunrise in space, observed through the space shuttle, vividly displays the Earth's atmospheric refraction of light. The optical principles of refraction and reflection work together in fiber optics. The angle of incidence determines if the light is refracted or reflected. The angle of incidence is the angle at which light enters the junction where two materials meet, measured from perpendicular, or normal. The critical angle is the degree that does not allow light to enter the second material. Reflection occurs when the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle. Refraction occurs when the angle of incidence is less than the critical angle. In fiber optics, this angle is usually about 80 degrees from the normal, so very shallow approach angles of 10 degrees or less relative to the surfaces results in reflection. That's it for this module. There are several interactions in this module illustrating the nature of light. You may return to any of these interactions as a review before taking this certification examination by clicking on Interactions on the course map. Now take this quiz to complete the module.